Hi guys, I'm Jack, and this is episode 10 of Turning on Harbor. Today we're going to be talking about Disney news in the coming weeks at Disneyland, and I decided to skip the intro today because we're going to change it up a little bit. Because it's episode 10, we can make some adjustments, and although the picture quality of this video is not great because I'm recording it on my computer and it's one week late, I still want to give you some good content and I want to continue creating for you. So. Here we go. We're going to be talking some news today. Oh yeah, and I even wrote a theme song. Disney News. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. So first up, we have a new limited time deal for SoCal locals at the park. These special three-day ticket passes will continue selling through April 16th. And the best part is that they're only $149 for one park a day, or $189 for a park hopper. This makes it about only 50 to 63 bucks per day, which is pretty awesome. The three-day tickets will come with one magic morning for you to go early into a park one day, which usually only happens if you're staying at a resort. The only downside is that the offer is only available for people living in the Southern California area. This is being offered so people can experience everything that is going on right now and all the changes that are, that are happening. So speaking of everything going on in the park, here's a rundown of what's happening soon. So first we have the Main Street Electrical Parade that came home on the 20th of January and it will be incredibly cool to see again when I get to go in March and I only got to see it when I was six so I'm excited it's a little bit of a throwback. While I'm sad that Paint the Night is leaving, I think that it's a good replacement because of the nostalgia that comes with it, like I was saying. So speaking of nostalgia, Star Wars fans will be stoked to hear that Season of the Force is back, or it's still here depending on how you look at it in 2017, and most importantly, Space Mountain is still Hyperspace Mountain. They call it Season of the Force, but it really seems like everything is the same except for Space Mountain and the short film Star Wars, The Path of the Jedi, which I assume is in the Captain EO theater. You have Launch Bay with characters, props and stuff, Jedi training and Star Tours with, I think, just more Star Wars-y feel in Tomorrowland. All in all, it isn't changing much, which is good because, well, it was working before, but I'm really excited to go on Hyperspace Mountain this year. Next, we have the return of Remember, Dreams Come True Fireworks, narrated by Julie Andrews. Disneyland hasn't seen this show in two years, so we are going to call 2017 the year of nostalgia. But in actuality, this is the year of the rooster, and you can celebrate the Lunar New Year at DCA, that started on January 20th through February 5th. The most exciting part about this celebration is that a new animated world of color-ish show called Hurry Home will precede World of Color and you should stay tuned to Fresh Baked for some footage in the coming weeks. There will also be some live performances, activities, theme decor, delicious food offerings, and characters in the Lunar New Year costumes. And Speaking of food, the Food and Wine Fest at DCA is expanding to five weeks this year, which will go from March 10th to April 16th, which means I'll get to experience it when I get to go. There are seminars, tastings, and a whole lot more, and that's what we have going on in the parks in the coming weeks. For our next bit of news, we will be talking about the Disneyland Max Pass. My opinions on this are coming from the information that has been released by the Disney company, Maxwell Glick, Sarah Snitch, and Network 1901. Be sure to go watch their videos on this topic as well, as they were informational, educational, and very well put together. So the Disneyland Max Pass is being introduced as a $10 digital Fast Pass system, where you can reserve your Fast Passes on your phone instead of having to go to the kiosk. The introductory fee of $10 will let one person use the system for the day, and you also receive free digital downloads from PhotoPass, meaning you can get your pictures from Radiator Springs Racers, California Screamin', Splash Mountain, and Hyperspace Mountain. I think the PhotoPass deal by itself is worth $10, and the fact that you get Fast Passes on top of that is a super plus. Get it? Fast Pass? Well, a lot of people have been skeptical and not sure about the system, but I'm going to take the positive side and tell you about all the pros that I've found while researching. I think the best feature that is coming out of this 
is the days of going to a fast pass kiosk and realizing that they're completely gone for the day have vanished. You can be in line for California Screaming and be booking your next fast pass without even having to walk over to Soarin' Around the World. You can be in line for California Screamin' and be booking your next Fast Pass without even having to walk over to Soarin' Around the World, or even over in Disneyland getting one for Star Tours or Space Mountain. It'll save you a lot of walking and help you to be informed. And the best part about this is it's not just for the digital Fast Passes, they're actually adding kiosks so that you can use the paper Fast Pass system still. The other great thing about this announcement is that they are planning to add Fast Pass kiosks to Toy Story Midway Mania and the Matterhorn Bobsleds, which are two rides that desperately need the Fast Pass system. Finally, Disneyland is going to be using the Paper Fast Pass system and the Digital Fast Pass system on the app just as an add-on. If you don't think that you can pay the $10 per day, saying you have a family of four, so that would be $40, and then you have five days, that's 200 bucks for Fast Pass, which is getting to be pretty crazy uh, considering the ticket prices as well. So if that doesn't work for you, you don't have to pay the $10, you can just use the paper facet pass system and grab them as you regularly would. So obviously this is a test for more advanced systems such as My Magic Plus over at Disney World, but it's kind of scary because I love the paper fast pass system. It's so simplistic at Disneyland, but this could be a really cool technological step in the right direction, and I'm excited to see what will happen in the coming months as they continue to announce information about this system. So that's the news I have for you this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this new, kind of different format of video. The best way to watch slash listen is through the podcast feed whether it be on stitcher itunes overcast is my favorite app to use but make sure to give us a like on the youtubes and i would love to hear your comments about what you guys think about all this news coming especially the max pass i know a lot of people have different ideas about what's going to happen and even though we're switching the format that doesn't mean this has to leave i'll talk to you guys later <laughs>